Thank you, Professor Ayer, for this opportunity. Uh, it's an extremely good initiative. In fact, no doubts about it because uh, 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 rivers are, after all, uh, our uh, lifeline and uh, the status and the conditions, deteriorating conditions of rivers in India are really pathetic and it's um, cause for a serious concern. So definitely this is an extremely important initiative and uh, I mean, I'm sure people will realize it in the days to come, if not today. Uh, having said this, in fact, uh, you, you, in fact, wanted me to talk about not only the dying rivers, but also the living rivers. I see your point. But unfortunately, in the case of Tamil Nadu, I don't find a living river. <laughs> that is why my title is something like this, In Search of a Living River. Okay, so I, I, it's not my fault. <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to do my best in searching for a living river, and uh, you will see in the course of my presentation if there is no, any. We had one living river, one of the... the Tamra Parani. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Anyway, now, uh, the whole idea of my presentation is not really kind of uh, uh, ring uh, alarm bell, but it's only kind of a, uh, take it as a kind of a wake-up call for all of us uh, in a kind of a, uh, the state of environment in which we live, the kind of a ecological degradation that we are, we are, we are confronted with. <laughs> now, in fact, uh, for the benefit of uh, the school children who are here, as you all know, rivers are just not uh, the carriers of water, and they, they, we use that water for our drinking and other purposes, but it also carries uh, quite a lot of political, economic, and social history. If you go back and if you all read all the, the, in, in the Gangetic Plains and so on, if you really go through the history, I mean, it, it carries uh, quite a lot of a social history and economic history and political history. That's why it's extremely important. We cannot really let these rivers die. Today, water resources in India are under great threat for several reasons, and particularly because of the indiscriminate use and scarcity and pollution. And this undermines our resource base, which is going to backfire a great deal in the days to come. That is why we, we, we are now here to talk about you know, what is going to happen to the very foundations of our uh, the, 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 the sustenance and, uh, and the livelihoods. Now, I, I don't want to really talk about uh, the dying or living rivers in isolation. You really have to situate it in a particular context. Now, um, the ramification of the pollution is indeed is a more severe in the, de the first of all, the le less developed countries compared to the developed countries. If you go to England, for instance, Thames was in a very bad state and Rhine River was in a very bad state in, in Europe. Well, then they, they woke up and uh, they did uh, a great deal in order for, in order for you know, cleaning up the river. But today, Thames is uh, at least you can, if, if not really uh, portable, but you can, it's not stinking. And so also the case of a Rhine River. But in India, we I don't know far, how, how, far, how, how far have we got to go to clean up these rivers. There have been attempts, but still these attempts have been a failure, but we are not in a position to uh, clean up our rivers, although we have been spending billions and billions of rupees. Now, the ramification of pollution is indeed more severe in less developed countries that are afflicted with the uh, chronic problems of political instability, lack of political will, high level of illiteracy, and unceasing poverty. You really have to situate our uh, problem of uh, water pollution in, in, in this particular context. Now, the mo two most important uh, factors which really contributes to the river pollution uh, are, one, the increasing degree of urbanization contributing to sewage generation and the rapid industrialization contributing to industrial effluent. These are the two major important factors which are really at the forefront in contributing to our pollution load. Now, in addition to that, we also have problems of uh, uh, problems such as lack of basic needs and basic infrastructure, high level of illiteracy and low level of awareness, women subordination, high degree of corruption at all levels, poor health care, poor social security systems, high population density with a poor rural and urban infrastructure, most importantly, the looming uh, climate change threat and its impact on water resources, agriculture, and food security. Now, the growing menace of river pollution needs to be uh, addressed and contextualized in, in this particular fashion, in, in this particular context. And uh, the idea is actually, you know, if this is a kind of a state of condition we are in already, if our, our, our environment and ecology are going to really be worse from in the days to come, what is going to happen to our own sustenance and, and the basic uh, living mechanisms. So the problems with the existing approach of data collection is one thing which we also have to really understand. I want to really emphasize this, uh, uh, particularly in this forum, particularly because we have a database on all, uh, uh, you know, rosy things. You know, like for instance, you know, what is our production? You know, what is our yield? 
you know what is our foreign direct investment what is the foreign exchange reserve that we have and 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 all that and industrial development growth rates how many industries are coming up every day but how do we have we ever seen in any government publication like this is the kind of a pollutant that you see in the river this is the the groundwater quality this is the surface water quality and this is the state of condition of our rivers do we have any kind of a data that's an extremely important data this is what i call the invisible data now why is that our government and department of statistics in various states are not uh, i mean uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, providing enough attention and concentration in collecting this information no uh, the information of uh, relating to the uh, visi visi visible data is okay but invisible data is what you really need actually to really uh, do some kind of a damage uh, control uh, mechanisms there are certain data which are never given importance pollution of river basins pollution levels surface water ground water solid waste biobiological waste e waste urban sewage uh, and so on and the floods and droughts every year you come across a flood and drought in one part of the country or the other have we ever database on what is the kind of a flood situation what is the kind of a drought situation how many animals have died how many people have died do we have any database so tell me which government document gives me this information if i if i am a researcher if you have to collect this information about the koshi river flood koshi was a, three fourths of the bihar was under flood do you have any database is there any recorded database by the government of india or by the government of bihar no but these are the kind of information which i call the invisible data the pollution river uh, you know the suicide deaths all that is a journalist who try to really go and get this information but otherwise government does not put in any effort to, to get this information these are what i call the invisible data which are extremely important to address these issues if you don't have the database how are you going to address these issues all our plan documents talk about all rosy things but then unless we have this a uh, flip side of, of of our development if you don't have it you really cannot address this issue therefore uh, uh, so uh, the uh, data exists in government offices they are not available to outside exactly you know, even that is a data can, uh, collected can we for for that convenience yes. actually to suit their needs it is not the actual data it's not the actual data you really have to put them on a gs floods and droughts have to be on the gis mapping you have to map it is extremely important data but unfortunately you don't have that information now this is the context in which i am going to talk about uh, in search of living rivers or in search of living rivers in tamil nadu look at this map 